The sum of three consecutive integers is 63. What is the lowest of the three integers? Oop, consecutive. Mm. Can I spell? Wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> ah. This is math, not spelling, uh, so we should be good. Consecutive. Is it with a C? Yeah, yes. okay. I almost did it with the Q. <laughs> okay, consecutive integers. It's been yeah. a long week with Monday oh, off and all. Man. <laughs> Ooh, it's rough getting back into it. Okay, so three consecutive integers, and their sum is 63. And we need to know the lowest integer. Sure. What is the lowest? Okay. So um, we've had questions kind of like this before on Homework Hotline, and I always, I always mention that there are multiple ways to solve most math problems. Um, one of them, of course, would be guess and check. You know, I could guess three consecutive integers and check just to see, hmm, well, does it give me a sum of 63? Um, and I could do that until I found my answer. However, another approach to this problem would be an algebraic approach, and I think for this particular one, because the sum is 63, kind of, um, it's a larger number, not large per se, but uh, kind of a larger number, I might go with the algebraic method to maybe cut down on the time to solve it. So, um, what that means, if I'm going to solve algebraically, is that I need to create some kind of equation um, using variables. And um, what I know, I can maybe create variables first, or set variables first, based on what I know about these three integers. I know that consecutive, even though I don't know how to spell it, <laughs> I did figure it out, but um, I know that consecutive means in a row. So for example, consecutive numbers, one, two, three, five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12. Those are all consecutive integers. And the way that consecutive integers are related to each other is that, so just give the, this example with 10, 11, 12, is that the second one is always one more than the first, and the, and the third one is always two more than the first. So knowing the relationship between consecutive integers helps me set variables. So let's say I make my first integer, I'm going to make it x, because I don't know, I don't know what it is, make it x. Instead of making my second integer y, which I could do as well, but won't really help me if I have an equation with two variables, one equation, tough to solve. I know that the second integer is related to the first integer because it's one more than the first integer. So what I can say is that my second integer is going to be x plus 1. Um, similar idea with my third integer. I know that that is going to be related to my first one by uh, two, two more. And this is just an example of three consecutive integers. So one, two more. So I'm going to say x plus two. So now, I'm going to get rid of these just so we don't confuse anyone. So now that I've set my variables, I've kind of, I've set my three unknowns, I've defined them, <clears throat> I can create an equation. I know that my first integer plus my second integer, which is x plus 1, plus my third integer, which is x plus 2. When I add all three of those together, they should add up to give me 63. So this equation now is going to help me find out what x is and then hopefully find my first, second, and third integer. So to solve the equation, one of the first things you should do when you're solving equations is combine any like terms or simplify anything that you can. So I notice here I've got x, x, and x. I can put those together to call them 3x. And then I can put these together, 1 plus 2, to give me 3. So I know that 3x plus 3 is going to give me 63. It's a much simpler equation to solve now. Now, um, I want to do inverse operations to get x alone, isolate it. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I get 3x is equal to 60. And then to isolate x, uh, finally, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 3. And I end up getting x is equal to 20. Um, <clears throat> now, here's where I will take this 
I'll go back to my initial information where I define my variables and I will kind of I'll fill in the blanks. So I know that it, if x is 20, that means my first integer is going to be 20. My second integer is going to be 20 plus 1, or x plus 1, which would be 21. And then my third integer, I'm going to move my arrow here. My third integer is going to be x, or 20, plus 2, which is 22. And then, of course, I can check my work. So I'm thinking 20, 21, 22. I can check my work by adding these three together to see if they do truly give me 63. And they do. We end up getting, that's the truth. And then we'll go back to our question. We wanted to know what was the lowest integer. And that would be 20. So there's an algebraic method of solving the problem. Again, I mentioned there are other ways to solve it. Um, guess and check would be valid. Might take you longer. Might take you shorter if you're lucky. Who knows? But um, that's an, an example of an algebraic way to solve it. If you were going to do guess and check, what number would you pick first? Mm, I would probably do 63 divided by 3. Yeah, that's, that's, I was actually just <clears> thinking <throat> that because if you did 63 divided by 3, mm -hmm. then you're, you know those numbers have to be right next to each other. Mm -hmm. right? It's like 20, 21, 22, or 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. If you did 63 divided by 3, you're actually finding the average mm -hmm. of those numbers. So whatever you get has to be that middle number, right? Right. Because the median has to be the average in that case, in which case you can just pop one lower down. That's very true. Yeah. That is very true if you do use number sense. So hypothetically, you could, let's say you got, you had the sum is 120. You could just divide by three. And if it were four numbers, you could divide by four. Mm -hmm. And then you could kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. A lot of ways like to do that these. strategy.